Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Hello, friends. Welcome to Mavs Moneyball's Group Therapy. This is Kirk Anderson, and I'm editor in chief of Mavs Moneyball. You are joining me at Shade Past Midnight now on uh, Sunday, the fifteenth. Uh, I don't know. I just did twenty minutes with Josh Bow on our normal podcast, and I got out most of my uh, frustration because. Most of what I am I am working through is is reconciling the fact that after playing fifty five minutes or whatever the other night, it felt like this was one that the team was going to come out flat. Uh, only, I mean that did sort of happen. The defense was just atrociously bad. Um, foul trouble, injuries. Christian Wood was also out, so it's like four four guys out of your rotation players are gone. And it's been that way for nearly a month with three of them. And the Mavericks are above 500, which big picture wise is good. But game to game wise, this has just become it's become a slog. And as Rebecca notes in the chat, we get to do it again tomorrow. That's exactly right, because they play 20 hours from now. Uh, the, the game tips off at 8 p.m. local, which is an hour earlier. Feels a little mean, but alas. Okay, let's hang out for a little bit and let's go to bed. I don't want to you know, do too much just because what is there really to say? Um, Brett, welcome to the show. What's up, buddy? Hey, Kurt. So I'm not, as you said, it's a slog. I mean, and, and they're missing really their, like arguably I mean, like three of their five best players. Right. In this game. <laughs> the, the guys that are out. So let's just go through them. So Dorian starter, Josh Green probably should start. Uh, Maxi Kleba finisher. Christian Wood also starter. And, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean the, the, they were out four of like like four of the five of their closing yeah. lineup, or like yes, you know, closing lineup. Like, great, great, like, great point. Yeah, like I mean, the, the, so that's like you know, four of their top six players basically, had Luke and Dinwiddie, um, and so and so like so I'm not mad that they lost the game. However, when they announce that Wood will start tomorrow, that will make me very upset. Because, and then this is, and this is not, this is the kind of thing that, like, when you look at back-to-backs and when you should rest, if you are going to rest, and teams will do this, I mean, teams rest. I mean, yep. getting yep. getting mad about it is not about about the fact that teams decide to rest star players is, like, at this point, you know, that's a lost cause. The league should just find a way to fix the schedule so that this doesn't happen. But you you want to maximize winning the most winnable game. Yep on a back-to-back when you rest. And so that means like if you, and, and so that's why sometimes fans are, are frustrated when, you know, when you're, you know, if you were, if the Mavericks were playing, you know, the, the Nuggets and then the, the Magic, they would say, and the, and the Mavs, you know, rested Luca against the Nuggets instead of the Magic. They would say, oh, why wouldn't you want to give yourself a better chance to win both games? And that's not what you want to do. You want to give yourself the best chance to win one of those games. And, and, and I think that if, if, I mean, Wood could be actually injured, and he could not play tomorrow. Yeah. But 
if he basically just rested this game and they split their two best players to give them the best chance of winning both, that is terrible, like season management. And that's and that's the kind of stuff that that I think the Mavs are relatively better at than the game to the individual games and the individual plays and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I where I was where I like I went from being annoyed to outright pissed when Hardaway got hurt because he shouldn't have been in the game. That's that's where I like it was a 16 point lead going into the fourth. Then it was a 19 point lead and then it was a 22 point lead or 21. And then there, those guys are still in the game. And, you know, nobody talks about this now because it doesn't matter, but tell me what happened to Luka Doncic on the very last game of the regular season. Yep, exactly. I mean, he got injured in a game that the, 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 the result didn't really matter by the time the game, by the time the second half started, they knew it didn't matter. Now, again, I, I, I never know what being unfair to kid because I'm so kind of emotional about all this, but some of the decision making, I just don't get it. That that's one of them. I mean, the real answer is he wasn't ready to seed. And then you watch what happens when they play any of these bench guys. And, you know, I, I, I just, I savage Theo Penson as a concept, not as a person, but just as a, as a non NBA player, getting minutes in the NBA game. It's like, oh, well, he shot three of six from threes. So I'm sure somebody's going to say well, it. Oh and God, it, it's incredible that he like, somehow isn't the worst player on the floor at all times that he's on the floor. <laughs> like, 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 that gets kind of lost in the fact that he's like a professional podcaster who 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 takes up a, an, an NBA roster spot. That's right. And they have and three of those guys because that's like basically JaVale's job too. JaVale's job is a vibes guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, ja- JaVale had – of like 90 seconds that were just the worst basketball. Well, and, and I get these people like, look, I never like to talk down to anybody about sports because there's a whole lot. I don't understand. Okay. There's basketball is hard and easy. It is extremely difficult. All right. To, to, to master, but to understand it is basic. And I know anyone that thought JaVale McGee was good good like functional good and not just like not only doesn't know ball but box score watches i went to basketball reference and look at his stats i mean hell tonight he had five rebounds in eight minutes he also gave up a shit ton of rebounds and was a negative eight in eight minutes and he's a big reason for that like he is a terrible team basketball player yes and and he's been like this his whole career it's never like it's never like he didn't put up wouldn't he put, put up, up like numbers on a bit like, well, he was on the Olympic team and like guys that says more about the state of American bigs than it does JaVel McGee. Whatever. Yes. It's not his fault. I shouldn't pick on yeah. him, but it's just it's just it's a reminder of how challenging some of this stuff can be. Or, or when they talk about, you know, that he's one range. Yeah, I don't with, care. He know, didn't play Lakers a minute players. of the finals yeah, just, against the with the Lakers. Yeah. yeah, he 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 ate meaningless regular season minutes, which which ha- which can work on a team that that is right. that like those if teams. If you were like our third big, if you were our third, well, he's been relegated to being the Mavericks' third big, but he was signed to be the starter. <laughs> yeah, he he got the first big money to play uh, spot minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Brett, you got anything else for us? Nope. Just uh, hopefully, hopefully Green can come back yep. soon because because they've been saying. I, I mean, it's been it seemed like he's about to come back for like a I just don't understand why they would act like he's coming back if he's not ready. That doesn't help. All does is piss Yeah, I mean, all it does is piss us off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so so I mean hopefully he's hopefully he's back even, even though Luca I mean I haven't seen anything else but I just assume I mean he's definitely not playing tomorrow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. All right, man, thanks so much. All right. All right, coming up next, I want to let my East Coast friend go to bed here. Ewan, what's up? Hey, what's up? See you. <laughs> it's a, I wouldn't say that much. You know, I had a little hope watching, you know, Bullock hit like what, nine threes? So that felt good. Eight you threes, know, huge. Yeah. yeah, he raised his three point percentage by two and a half points in a single for the season in a single game. <laughs> <laughs> and you could, I mean, 
a lot of the games you can tell how how it's gonna kind of pan out a little bit by how Luca starts the first quarter. You know, he missed some chippies and stuff like that. You know, shots he normally make, he missed. But at the same time, it was like people are playing football against Luca, and it's it's to a point where the refs have. To I didn't like that at all. I I start agree. Controlling that. I, that's one where I thought like. It's this was a good. I, I deleted like four tweets because I just don't feel like arguing with Dame Lillard super fans. But because Dame is is six foot tall and weighs like a buck seventy five, when he gets hit, he literally does go flying. Luca takes the same amount of beating, only he is sixty pounds heavier, and he doesn't go flying. And it's like a foul is a foul is a foul is a foul. If if Luca's going to get bodied every time he moves, at a certain point you have to, you know, tell the defender to quit doing that. It's, it's one thing if you don't want to call it every time, but it's like the, the rest were really letting letting people hit Luca. But then again, he also wasn't making them pay with free throws. Woo. Yeah, one for six. Yeah, that's pretty bad. And yeah, you can say when when he got hit, when he was trying to do a post up and the guy ran right, right into him, he had like a little yep. whiplash on his neck. Like he was pretty pissed. And then the next position down, the ref kind of gave him like a makeup yep. call. Like, okay, like, no, just make the call at the right time so he doesn't, you know, put in that position where he's, where he's um really hurt. We don't want to be that, you know. Fans don't want to see it. We don't want to see it. So they gotta have better control of that. And um, and just like say, so Reggie's on. Tim Hardaway is off. It's like, <laughs> it's like I just want to know when is it all gonna come together? When is it all gonna come to? Tim Hardaway is hitting his shots. Reggie's hitting his shots. Well, that's got to be kids' argument. And he was sort of saying that post game where it's like the things will come together. And, and I think it's it's not a terrible one as much as this team sort of frustrates me. Um, they're still four games above 500. I think they're fifth in the West right now. Maybe they're still fourth, but it, it's just, it, this was a, God, it felt it, it Josh Bo said in our re, recap podcast, he's like, this is why I didn't enjoy the Lakers game. Cause they should have won that game in regulation. And he's right. They should have. Yeah. And, and like all those games that we lost in the beginning of the season when mm. Luke was playing so godly, I mean, he's still playing godly, but all those games that we lost to bad teams, this is the time we could be stomaching those losses right now because yeah. you're really banged up. You can rest him from maybe not a back-to-back, but I'm resting for these two games, you know, to give him more time to rest up. So it's like those losses early in the season is kind of biting us now. Yeah. But um, it, I would say one thing about Luca is he he accepts the double team. And, and as much as he gets double team every game is – like I said, I wonder if he gets frustrated. He always said he doesn't like – I mean, he – accepts it and he makes the right play he makes the right pass but there gotta be some to a point where it's like like damn y'all really double team me every game all day every game yeah, for the whole yeah. game like oh man it's it's, it's 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 crazy but I guess once we get everybody back you know the quality of looks is gonna continue to be and how it is if people are gonna continue to double him like that well the offense wasn't and, the problem it was definitely just the defense where it's everybody's getting killed yeah. everybody was getting killed and that wasn't fun yeah, that wasn't fun, but we'll see what happens tomorrow. If, if Wood doesn't play, we're gonna we're gonna have a lineup of what Hardy, Tim Hardaway, Powell. Maybe, I don't know what that lineup will look like if Luca doesn't play and Wood doesn't play. So sure, it's gonna be dark. You might play. Oh, yeah. yo, lastly, Frank looked good in his minutes. See, you know, he put some, he has some NBA plays out there. He that did. significant tonight. So that's great. Right, yeah, he's still shooting like like eleven percent on the season. So, <laughs> but he did. He made all his shots and. We had Harp talk about, you know, Frank Milikina as a player. As a player. (laughs) All right, man. You have a good night. All right, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're all doing this tomorrow. That's how bad this is. Brian, welcome. Welcome up, buddy. What's going on? Uh, not much, buddy. Trying to get this preview worked up. So, oh yeah, you got to cut. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Brian writes for Mavs Moneyball, and he's he's writing the preview for tomorrow. And um, <laughs> let's just say, if you don't turn in a work of art, I'm not going to be mad. Two hundred words. <laughs> yeah, two, 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 two. <laughs> like so, what's the what's the name? Everybody uses this as a meme, but it's like it's it's a. It's it's a, a a movie where it's like got one of the Nazi guy and he's like are it's a Nazi guy going are we the baddies and like <laughs> like I'm think it's like I'm thinking about that but it's like like right are we bad at basketball like that's kind of how I feel right now. Oh man, uh, it is funny, Kurt. Kurt uh, after you know everybody was going bananas the other night after like the Mavericks won. It was fun. Well, okay, well it was fun, but. 
The thing that kind of uh, made me a little bit, I guess, pissy is I saw some very credible, credible, smart basketball people, way smarter than I, that cover, provide content, right? Sure. And uh, they were champion, championing this team as I was questioning, okay, am I the crazy one? Because the, the Mavericks blew an 18-point lead yeah. against one of the worst teams in the NBA. Yeah. And I, they didn't have Pat Bev, one of obviously their better defenders. It was LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, and dudes, yeah. and a bunch of dudes. And I saw people championing Kristen Wood's defense, and I'm just like, okay, got you know, you very very intelligent people. I can't have you be fly by Dallas Maverick watching. Well, I mean, it was good. In, it was good in the overtime because it was good in the overtime. I, but it's I, like, I, I could it be Kurt, good in the? Could it be good in the fourth quarter? Uh, Kurt, <laughs> I, I know, but what I, I want those people to comment on this game. Where, sure. where are they tonight? That that like you can't be fly by casual Maverick fans just because it's a big stage and it's like, yeah, I know it's LeBron, it's Luca, it's a huge stage. But if you're not going to be consistent with these teams, like, I don't want – I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not going to take your comments seriously. Well, I mean, the West is just such a bull – like, this is such bullshit. Like, so the, the Sacramento Kings are five and a half games back from from the Nuggets in first. They're, they're fourth. We are fifth and six game back. Then there are three teams that are eight games back, another three teams that are nine games back, the Thunder that are nine and a half games back and the Lakers in the 13th seed in the West are just <laughs> 10 games back, which if you're looking at the play in line, they're two games back from the play in line. So <sighs> it, it's, it's really hard to judge. This is why like the Mavericks will not, you know, anybody that's like, Oh, should they just blow it up? Cause Kevin uh, stump came into our slack and said that it matters. <laughs> it's like, they're just not going to do that. They're not going to do it because they're over 500 and when you have like arguably the MVP candidate, like the MVP, you just understand that that's going to be the guy that drags you there. Now they're probably going to lose tomorrow night. And I think if, if they go on like a losing, like an earnest to goodness losing streak, because they play um, Miami and they play Atlanta on Wednesday. Yeah. Atlanta, Atlanta, Wednesday, those two Miami games, Friday. If you come out of those two games and you're basically, and you like lose both of those by the end of the week, like next week you're staring at 500 again, then maybe this is a little bit of a different conversation, but I just I, I have a hard time with with I I get very mad and then I get over it because it's just the West is so weird. Well, I just also don't want to champion this team for potentially going one uh, one and four on a road trip. Sure. Like that's not that's not acceptable. Like I was compl- if they would have split to, have gone two and two this week, that's I would have been okay. But just the fact that you had to grind. Yeah. And grind a stinky Lakers team to double overtime. And they could have easily lost that game, according sure. to the pool report. Like, I'm I'm sorry, I'm not gonna like ruffle their hair. Like if like hypothetically, if Luca doesn't play tomorrow and Dame plays and all Portland starters play and somehow the Mavericks run it, I will gladly ruffle their hair. I'll like, good job, Mav. Sometime somehow you won a game that you weren't supposed to, but like, God forbid tomorrow. Kid is going to be like, well, Luca's ankle's a little sore, so he's not going to play tomorrow. So. I mean, they should just right because everybody, those guys looked exhausted. I oh yeah, the Luca. This was obviously one of Luca's worst game of the year, year easily. But I mean, he was dead. I mean, what a like yeah. the guy and the guy had to play fifty two minutes against the Lakers. Like, I, I mean, I don't, I don't I, like. I'm not mad at him. Like, if he wanted to be pissy against the refs tonight, I mean, what, whatever. But it's just like it's an indictment, Kirk, that he had to play fifty two minutes versus sure. Lakers. Like, yeah. what are we doing? And just one more thing, I see people having arguments over. Oh, why didn't Jaden Hardy have to play twenty minutes? Jaden Hardy shouldn't have to play twenty minutes in a game. What are we doing? Stop well, it. it. He, he's he, I said I responded to you specifically in this like, but I, I also told Josh about it where Hardy if if kid seeds the game earlier, which I think he should have, because the Mavericks were just they were never they were never they, they got within eleven points at the two minute mark in the third quarter, but then they went to the fourth quarter down sixteen. Clear the bench at that point, then let Hardy yes. play. That's maybe part like that I kind of get because the kid just has this knack of letting people like he I get why I get you know the next game I guess is a good example but it, it's with everybody so tired it just it, it strikes me as a recipe for disaster so I would have I would have liked to have seen some more Hardy minutes but but one of the things we got to see from Hardy if we're just going to talk about him real quickly is 
I would like to see some progression on defense. He's still very, yes. he's still very bad. And that's okay. He's going to continue to be bad. But progression comes through minutes. So it's like it goes hand in hand where he learns because he plays. Offensively, I love his attack, but he's also shit stuffed at the rim repeatedly lately and mix it up a little bit. I, so, I, I, th- I think that's my biggest consternation to like these people that want more hardy meds. Okay, you you see all these lose. baskets. Like, yes. We're going to lose. Okay. Like, I, I need you to sit down and watch him be stinky on defense because he stinks. He's, yep. he, I mean, I love the kid. Talk to him. Sure. Good, good kid. But he, I, he's listed as 6'5". Yeah. He is not 6'5". He is a 6'3", tiny yeah, guard who can score. Guard. Fine. Like, Let's, let's be okay with that. But, like, be okay with him being bad on defense. Like, I, I need you people, like, out there. I'm, like, not everybody in this room, this chat, because everybody in here is actually really smart, and I'm so glad that we've got the, like, the 50 people here at, like, freaking midnight. Like, thank you all. Yeah. Like, you guys rock. But I'll hop down, buddy. Uh, we'll talk soon. All right. We will talk soon. Thanks so much. I saw a little – I need to go – Um, somebody in the chat noted the, the big woes uh, – Weekends with Wo, uh, Big Wass over there at the Ringer. My buddy Adam R has joined. Talked a little Mav stuff. Um, I agree with Adam. The the Mav the Mavericks don't need a second guy. They need better players. But we've said that for a while. Okay, who we got? Got a couple more people left. Uh, Micah, what's going on? Give Micah a second. Hopefully, Micah didn't fall asleep. Maybe it's not letting Micah talk. No, no. There we go. He was there. You got me. What's up? Oh, man, just another L, I guess, man. They, like, they wasn't that bad on offense. Like, a lot of people actually could put the ball in the basket, which is surprising. I a lot of three. I definitely didn't have. I didn't have Reggie Bullock going 80% from three on 10 attempts. That that was wild. But, yeah, they everybody out there just got cooked. And it's just um, – when you're, when you're missing pro- – like, not even just saying that they're rotation guys. Like, you – especially, like, if we're seeing C. Wood getting – now, I'm not saying he's no stopper or he's locking down the, the paint or nothing like that. So sure. I'm saying he's he's improved. Yeah. He's a better defender than what we got. So when you're missing when you're missing your four best defenders, just expect to get cooked and you just have to try to win out score somebody and when they're just shooting your face off from three, there's nothing you can really do about it. So. Now, I don't know how to fix the defensive stuff because when you're down this many guys, everything's a mess. Right. It's just like, if you, say, if you do that to any team, it's just like, you know, Portland is still so weird to me because when you, like, you look up and down their team, and it's like, man, they got a lot of guys that I'd like to have on my team, but they are still so mid. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, crazy. two small guards is fun for regular season. Anthony Simons and Dame, but I just winning requires a certain series of events to happen. They don't have, you know, Nurkic can be played off the floor in meaningful minutes. He's he's so it's that's that's why absolutely, absolutely. Like I, that's one thing I'll say. I think on that element alone, if we had C one for the game, because he's. He's blasting them dudes face off. Oh, like, yeah, he, he beats both the hell times that we got. Woods, you, Woods like, calling he, card he, he, is beating yeah, bad teams. It's, uh, especially, especially if you have no talent defensively as a big, see what is going to make you look ridiculous. I feel like. And he, that's why he's just. Narcus and Eubanks makes them look ridiculous. I feel like he did in the second matchup earlier this season, but I could be misremembering. I was at that game, so I was like, "Not." Nah, I had a different vantage point, but I remember him well. Uh, yeah, yeah. The last time we played, what else you got for us, buddy? I mean, that's that's about it. Get to do this again tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> so um, let's let's get ready for that lineup. It's going to be 
It's going to be hilarious. Hey, um, hey, you know, it could be worse. We could all be Chargers fans, and we're not. Thank goodness. Wow. Good God, man. Um, what did they do? This just. They should have know, fired like, their coach last year. I'm a big Chiefs fan, and like I, I, I wanted them to win just because they would have had to keep Staley. He's an awful coach. Justin Herbert's like an incredible quarterback, and they don't even roll him out of the pocket. Yeah. So. Right. No, I, no, I'm, I used to be a Cowboys fan, but I gave up on him. <laughs> like my, my fandom can only take so much, and I'm from East Texas, so sure. I just turned, I just turned into a Chiefs fan. You know, so like. Yeah, I, don't, I think he's getting number two. So, I'll leave it at that. All right, my friend. Thanks so much for hanging out. Yes. Yeah, so- All right, talk tomorrow. All right, Christian is going to take us home. What's up, buddy? Kirk, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> been better, been worse. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's not words to really describe it. This is kind of just every single game. It feels like the same problems, but yes. in a different for, way. For different for like three years. Yeah, and this is what happens. Like I, you know, I think it's so funny thinking back to some of the quote unquote talk, the talking points at the beginning of the season. Things like continuity, and yeah, you want a level of continuity, but you also need to change things at times because when you leave things the same for so long, you have the same problems, first of all, but also people just get sick of each other and things just don't improve because you do the same things. You have the same mistakes, you have the same problems. And I find it incredibly infuriating, just everything. There's nothing about this team. I find really positive. It's kind of why like, Uh, there's not you know we've talked about it this is not just like taking the medicine this is like this sucks Kirk like it it sucks because you got to watch a top five player like minimum go through this sure it's but it's the nature of long seasons and it's the nature of team building and you know because Luke is such a floor raiser he will continually correct for a lot of their problems and, and that's kind of the frustrating thing is he's such a floor raiser that any of the mistakes that are made just don't seem like mistakes because then, you know, people like, I, I, God, I remember after the seven game win streak, I was still like, I don't really believe in this team. We, we beat like some of the worst teams in the NBA, but then there were people like, where are all the tankers at? And I was like, look, man, like we beat seven bad teams. Like, I'm not going to sit here and praise this team to, to heck. Like this is not like us going and beating the Celtics and the Pelicans and, you know, the Bucks. This is like the Rockets two times. Like I, I do think there's just an improportionate amount of, you know, balance in terms of what, what where this team gets credit and where it doesn't. Right. And it's so puzzling to me. Um, I think part of it is just that you know. We talked about it the other day. This is the perfect uh, discourse machine. Um, And and, and look, that's not ever going to change. I, it's kind of why, you know, I I advocated for, I'm not a full tank person. I'm not like go and completely bomb your team, but I am a soft tanker. Like I do think just getting off of contracts and, you know, getting younger is important. And, you know, I'm a believer in Jaden Hardy, but I also think like there's like, Jaden Hardy cannot be someone you rely upon in his first season as a 20 year old. I mean, I think he's talented, but he's also got serious deficiencies as a player. And while I appreciate his positive attitude and he's like, I think he's going to like work out as a decent player at some point, but my God, like the fact that we got into a point in this season where we're sitting here and saying like, Oh, Jaden Hardy needs to do this. Like I, what are we talking about? Like even Jalen Brunson in his rookie season, who coming off of four very good years at Villanova was the college player of the year in his final year. You know, he was not that great in his rookie year. And uh, what are we supposed to expect from a guy like Jaden Hardy? Who's two, who, who's what who would be two years younger. Yep. Who doesn't have the same experiences is, you know, I, I think Jaden Hardy has more, 
he's more shifty, but he doesn't have the like he doesn't have any of the moves that 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 Brunson has or the the in the overall basketball IQ, right? Well, he's a Brunson, wildly different player. Yeah. yeah, and and I think if Jalen Brunson was going to struggle, I mean, what what are you expecting from Jaden Hardy? And honestly, I feel bad for the guy, and I kind of wish he was just back on the G League team because. At least maybe well, no, he to... needs to get used to taking these shots. Like he was, I watched two of his G League games in person. The kind of sh- it's it's a difference in the kind of shots you get and the the speed of the defenses. He's scoring thirty points a game because he's getting these looks where he's able to get his shot off. And against NBA teams, he doesn't have that time. He still got his shot off, but it's a different level of athleticism. And him learning the way he's learned, I think, is valuable. I think it'll matter eventually. I'm 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 pleased with what he's able to do, but I also don't, you know, our man um, Grant Afseth over at DallasBasketball.com has written like a couple of stories on Hardy, and I I told him this, so this is not me being an ass, but I was like, I really hate having to think about Hardy at all. <laughs> I which I get right, and I think the the Hardy having to think about Hardy is an emblematic symbol of the poor roster construction overall. Sure. Like, years. Uh, yeah, and I, I think about this, like, if Hardy was selected on the Kings, right, because the Kings technically were the ones who picked him, would that team even think about Hard- Jaden Hardy playing? I don't think so. I think Hardy would be, you know, like, uh, Nick Nick, and Isaac talk about it, the, the, Hardy would be the victory cigar for the Kings, right? He would right. be a legitimate victory cigar for other teams. But because the whole roster just has deficiencies all over it, you have, like, people are so concerned about Hardy doing well. And it's like, that's not what's going to happen. Like you look at what happened in the G league last year. Part of it was he's the kind of player who's going to take time to adjust in situations that he's in. He's not ever going to come into a situation and instantaneously work. And that's fine. Like I, you know, I think it's not every player comes into a situation and works because part of it is depending on what your skill set is or what you want your skill set to be, you have to adjust. And I don't think it helps that, you know, the coaching is not good, Kirk. I, I felt this all off, off season. I mean, the offensive coaching is bad. We can talk about this team putting up points, but I feel like this team puts up points at the behest of any kind of coaching. Um, you know, losing Ira Kokoshkov is bad. And, you know, I don't want to pile on Greg St. Jean, but that's his responsibility. I like Greg St. Jean. He, I, he, he, he seems like a good guy, right? Yeah. I don't have anything personally against him. I, he could be a good coach in the future, but this seems like too much for the guy. Like he, but they have to run actual sets. Like you don't go to the bench when, when Luca goes to the bench. You need to run offense, and it's not. They just don't do that. The third quarter was chaos. They they scored four points in three minutes, and they were lucky they didn't get blown out. But with with Luca on the bench, it, it eventually things just wore out, and the Blazers started hitting shots. But it's. The Mavericks just don't run any offense. I mean, yeah, it's kind of, it's almost the opposite problem of Rick. Where yeah. Rick, like Rick was so rigid yeah. in that you had to run these sets. And and kid, and I think it's a different thing, right? Rick is so pre-calculated, right? Sure. He's so preparative. Like, uh, you know, obviously Silas also helped in that in, in some ways where you know, they were constantly turning out sets. They were constantly turning out plays. And I think that in some ways affected Luca negatively. But then Kid just doesn't do anything. It feels like Kid is literally vibes basketball. He's like, I guess players can play. And, and you know, I've ta- we've talked about it earlier. It's just, I think it's a lack of understanding of what a basketball team means, right? Yes, you need to have the emotional maturity and the understanding with players, but you got to be able to give them some tactical nuance, right? You have to be able to give them something to do on a certain level. You can't just say, go out there and play. And, you know, I put a lot of that stuff at the feet of kid and, and, and Greg St. Jean and Sean Sweeney. I don't know. I feel like Sean, Sweeney, I don't have as much to complain about. I think some of the defensive things are just this personnel is not good. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard. But, to read. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I also think when Sean Sweeney had the personnel, I feel like he's done a better job than any of the other coaches. I think he's he's the only one I would be so completely negative on. But 
otherwise, I mean, there's nothing really positive about the coaching staff. And, and I think it's tough because we're seeing a really great player there. And I, I don't know, like it, it's hard to really evaluate this team at all. I think it'll take a long time, maybe, you know, a massive losing streak or, you know, coming people coming back from injury, but you know, it's very emblematic, right? Like this, this team just, there's no clear path for anything, whether sure. it's in game, whether it's out of game, whether it's in the season or it's in the off season. And it's very clear. It's just, it's just a lot of momentary stuff. And, and I, I don't know, it's very confusing and perplexing. And it's kind of why, like, you know, I, I know we had, a, you know, one of your writers on a few times ago, but it's kind of why I try to be very, you know, uh, back, backing off. I try not to get so into it because sure. You know, it, it can it gets a slog, Kirk. Eighty two well, games. We're is in a that lot. slog right now for sure. Eighty two games is a lot, Kirk. And you know, forty four. <laughs> God, it, it's it's rough. I mean, who knows? We'll we'll see what happens. Maybe I don't really expect anything from this team in terms of like doing much. But you know, I I think it's clear. Like this, for me, it starts at the ownership. At the end of the day, the fact that like because I was thinking about this, the fact that Mark Cuban wants to put a casino in the arena makes like Oh, that's zero... just taking advantage. No, that's taking advantage of Texas money. Cause like if gambling, that's, that's a different deal. Like I, I kick the shit out of Cuban on stuff. That's like my MO. If they legalize gambling in Texas, there's going to be stuff like that all over the place, sports gambling and gambling otherwise, like, which I get, but yeah. it's also like, if you're going to be willing to spend money, in that area, like, okay, if that happens, right, theoretically, yeah. you need to spend money on this team. Like, oh, sure. I, I, I don't, I don't understand. I also don't understand his anxiety of going over the cap. Like, okay, yeah, this roster is not good, but well, I do. you're not just going to, you're not, I understand why he doesn't want to. I, he doesn't have any money. He's broke. But, you know, you're not just going to get a good roster and then spend the money. Like, that's just not how yeah. the modern day NBA works. You have to be able to get pieces and sometimes overpay for pieces and over time it that salary will increase. Like you're sure. just you're not going to magically get all these players on five million, ten million, fifteen million dollar contracts sure. and then make sign extensions or you know go in the offseason and sign them to larger contracts. It's just that's just not how the NBA has worked in the past ten years, realistically. Right. Well, thank you for hanging out this evening. Yeah, you know, someone asked why is focus on focus more on, than spending money on, on the team. Why is his focus more on? Yeah, I mean that's the thing, right? Is like it's clear. I, I don't want to complain too much just because I feel bad. I, you know, it, it just it is what it is. Who knows? We win tomorrow. If something happens. I don't expect us to win for sure. a while, but hopefully everyone just has a has a good night and does something else and gets some rest. Sure. No, Brian in the Brian in the chat um, makes a makes a point of how are we going to judge the coaches fairly with four rotation guys out i actually said that in the podcast with josh where it's just like it's trying to re- it's trying to reconcile some things that are irreconcilable and it it where i get frustrated is that the back end of the bench so your mcgee your pinson your frank Nilakina, are guys that dallas chose and there are other guys they could have signed Sorry, it's like I, I hate to keep beating the same dead horse, but you could have signed Goran Dragic. You, you could have signed. Gosh, there's a guy who's with the the Wizards right now who was like free. Like, there's better bigs available than the guys that they got. But I, I do think it's a it's a fair it's a fair you know argument to be made because you know four guys out makes everything tougher. Okay, I think one more guy. I think we got rain down there in uh, Australia. Welcome. Good. Good. I don't know what the hell time it is there. How you doing? I'm oh, not bad, not bad. It's almost 5 p.m. Okay. But I'm going to be honest, I missed quite a lot of the game. So how bad was uh, Tim's injury? It it looked like something you see in a pickup game where somebody just has to stop playing. Uh, he walked off under his own power, which was nice, but it was um, – it was an ankle roll where his ankle roll, like his momentum carried his body forward and it was like over the top of his foot and ankle. It looked painful, but you know, it's, I guess it's how it responds to treatment. You never know. He could play tomorrow. He might not play for a week. Well, if Tim's out for even just one game and Wood's also going to be out for the next game, 
<laughs> Lucas should set out for the rest of the games that everyone else is going to be out for because it's just a waste of time having him play. I agree. I agree. That's what the Josh Bo said. It's like, <laughs> this just might be a G League game tomorrow night. It's, uh, yeah, it would, it would be absolutely tragic. And I will say, you know, hey, absolute win as long as uh, Reggie shoots 40% from three from now on. <laughs> but <laughs> other than that, there's, yeah, there's not much to take away. Too many people injured. Wood would have feasted on, on Nurkic. You know, defense is bad, but hey, we're missing, what, three out of four best defenders. You know, yep. second most talented offensive players out. What did we expect? So, depending on how long Wood and uh, Tim is out, maybe they should just go, you know, you know, tank for Victor. Fuck it. I mean, it, 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 the West is just such a mess, and they they're going to have to go on like an epic losing streak for it to be for it to be difficult. Oh goodness! Uh, I do I do have one thing to comment there. Sure. Um, amongst all of the extension talks for Wood, there's an, 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 there's also a good chance that he wouldn't even take four years for seventy seven million. But let's say will. he would. I don't think he would. Let, 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 let's say for argument's sake that he would. His Trade value as from what he's showing us, at least having that contract, if he would sign it, would be much greater than him having a one year and to trying to trade him off as an expiring at some point to try and clear cap space. So having him on a four year contract is just more worth it for him as a trade asset, and regardless of your opinion on him as a player. We should keep him having him as a higher value trade asset. It's just Better off with a four year contract. I, I don't really see that much of a downside. It's super easy to move up if, if you guys. really want to go plan power. Sorry, it was cutting it was cutting me out. Audio's bugging out a little bit, buddy. Oh, uh, that could could have been me if it's still doing it. Yeah, we can't hear you. I'm sorry. It's coming it's coming through like it's 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 hard for me to get mad about technology when you're coming through from across the planet. But uh, anyway, thank you for hanging out. He's asking a contract-related question, and I'm just going to make some assumptions here. If they were to sign him to an extension, they, I don't think they could trade him for at least a year, which they hate lack of flexibility. Uh, so not being able to trade him to next thing, I think, is a little bit like problem 1A. Um, the second thing is, and this comes from the fact that his agent – I am one of the 50 to 60 Dallas people that his agent sends messages to. And I, I still think his agent is going to try. And he should. That's the job. His agent should be, let's get as much money as we can. This is his last, likely his last big paycheck. Cause he's like 28, 20, 27, but you know, it's, it's, it's the NBA. You got to grab money when you can. So I, I still think he wants to make it to market and then see where he can make money. Even if he understands that Luca's the best player, you know, the, the best player he's played with and, Luca can give him a lot of, you know, great stats and they can work well together. It's still got to be more of a matter of, um, you know, you got it's money to set you up for the rest of your life. These are his peak earning years. I can respect that. Okay. I'm tired. Let's talk tomorrow or maybe let's not talk tomorrow. <laughs> Everybody be good. Uh, we will uh, talk with you soon. Bye guys. Thanks for hanging out.